Hey, what is up everyone? So I have a confession to make. I keep making a mistake all the time. Even though I know what's happening, I keep making this mistake. Let me unpack this for you guys. If some of your parameters are low or they're too high or something's up in your tank, for instance, you haven't tested your alk for a while, you know, alkalinity went down the way to five or six or maybe even less. How are you gonna deal with that? You're gonna deal with it very slow. You won't just dump into alkalinity into your tank and calcium so you can raise it up quickly. Okay. Every single time I test phosphates, oh, my phosphates are zero. Let's dump some phosphates in it. Corals respond negatively. Every single time there's SDN, RTN right off the bat, no matter what it is. If it's alkalinity, calcium, phosphates, nitrates, move your parameters very slow. If you haven't tested for alkalinity in a while, and let's say you went down or up for some reason or another, just try to raise it very slow. That's the biggest thing here. Don't dump a lot of salt into your tank or don't do nothing crazy like that. Corals thrive on stability. I would rather have parameters that are a little bit off as long as they're stable. For instance, if your salinity went a little bit too low, move that pump from your RTO container into a bucket where you have just salt water, just let it move it slow, just test every day, see where you're at, just let it do that. If your alkalinity went too low, just ramp up the dosage to the next few days slowly, and it's gonna depend how much you're gonna raise it up depending what are you dosing. For instance, I have lots of experience with Kalkwasser and Olfa Reef. Since Kalkwasser, it's not as potent. For instance, I'm dosing one liter, even more of Kalkwasser every single day, I think 1.2 liters. I can obviously add a little bit more to my Kalkwasser dosage so I can raise alkalinity and calcium if I'm gonna go that route. Or, or since I'm dosing Olfa Reef from Tropic Marin and I'm dosing around 30 mils a day, obviously I won't add up like five or six or 10 mils to dose more every single day. So if I'm dosing that, if I'm gonna move my alkalinity and calcium with Olfa Reef, I'm gonna do it probably just by adding one extra mil or two extra mils. Just make sure that I'm testing every day and do it very, very slow. If your phosphates are zero or nitrate are zero, don't just dump a lot of phosphates and nitrate in your tank. They won't end up well. I never, ever seen coral that suffers from low or a little bit higher values. That just never happens. Every single time I want to move my parameters a little bit higher or lower, I look at my tank and everything looks perfect. And then when I move any parameter faster, that's when problems will start. Just try to have your tank as stable as possible. First thing we're gonna do is look at your tank. If everything is looking good, you might wanna test and see your results. If something came up to be wildly off, just double test to make sure that you haven't done anything wrong with your testing. So double test with the same test kit and it's showing you the same result, I would double check that. I either order a new test kit and double check that result or grab a test kit from your body. Just find a way so you can double check that result. That's what we'll do first. And again, look at your tank. If everything's looking good, take your time to correct it. There's no rush. If your corals are happy, make sure that your test results are correct. That's when you can start doing something about it. Since most of the reefers these days own LEDs, everything that I just said about stability applies to LEDs as well. Please, if you end up getting a PAR meter and you end up test PAR and your corals are looking happy, move those LEDs if you decide to move them very, very slow. Corals adjusted to your lighting already, so let's not shock them. That's the biggest thing. In beginning, you wouldn't really know how your corals are looking, are they healthy or not. If you look at your tank and you see that something's off, of course you wanna test and correct for that since your animals are not looking good. For instance, if you check your pH and your pH is wildly off, is high, you probably over those calquas, you wanna correct it real quick since obviously not good for your corals. Or for instance, if temperature went too high, so you can correct it where it belongs since animals will die. If something's drastically off in your tank, it demands for drastic actions. So the longer in the hobby, the more you're gonna train your eye, the more you're gonna know what to look for. For instance, you're gonna have certain corals that are gonna tell you certain things. And that's why I didn't mention this right off the bat, because in beginning, you won't no, in the beginning, all you can do is just watch your parameters. And that's why I started talking right off the bat, not moving 
parameters too fast. Usually, the longer in the hobby, the more you learn on what you should react fast and on which things you shouldn't react as fast, which most of the beginners will make mistakes with. If you're new in the hobby, the best thing to do is if you know someone that's local to you and has been in the hobby for a long time, if he can look at your corals and kind of point it out. And that's gonna be it for me today. Don't keep making the same mistake as I have been for a while. Okay? And just write this down somewhere. Hey, don't go crazy by test kits. Don't test and go crazy by numbers and try to do something radical to a tank. Never do that. If you guys have any questions, drop them down below. Find me on Instagram and Facebook. I'm over there as well. And uh, yeah, keep those parameters stable and don't go crazy when they go out of whack a little bit. Just move everything slow. All right, with that out of the way, you guys have a great day. See you guys next video. And uh, yep, peace.